Well, welcome back to What's Up uh, with Prophecy Today. Today's topic is shipping containers. What are shipping containers and what do they have to do with prophecy? Well, we've all seen on the latest news the uh, issues with the evergreen container ship that was wedged crosswise in the uh, Suez Canal. Well, there were various dire predictions on what would happen, but it took the concerted effort of uh, dredging machines and uh, several large tugboats to free the evergreen container ship from the sides of this canal. The officials uh, were worried that the ship would possibly break in two because of the uh, stress on either end of the container ship. And uh, they were worried about all the uh, containers uh, dumping off the ship into the water. But with the combined effort of the high tide, which was a key thing in this uh, incident, and the dredging machines, and the assistance of the tugboats, uh, the ship was freed. And it was freed much quicker than people thought it initially. I heard estimates that it would take um, um, many weeks, many months, who knows. So it's interesting to me how this one ship uh, that was stuck in the Suez Canal caused such a global backup of ships. Actually, it was several hundred ships that could not get through the uh, Suez Canal and they were held up at either end. And this was uh, forcing several countries to even immediately start rationing of fuel, gasoline. So all this happened over a one week's period of time. This was happened very rapidly. So this tells me that the global supply chain is very fragile. We don't have very many days of stock ahead of the delivery of these gigantic ships from around the world. Now they, they estimated that the financial impact from just this one ship being stuck in the Suez Canal, they estimated that it was in billions of dollars per day that uh, were, were, were being affected, I guess maybe with revenue losses, et cetera. So, uh, and like I said, there were two countries, Libya and Iraq, that uh, both started rationing fuel because the fuel uh, containers, ocean-going uh, fuel containers, were not able to get through the Suez Canal and deliver fuel to their countries. So you might ask, Art, what does this incident on the Suez Canal with this container ship have anything to do with prophecy? Well, let's take a look at this. Now, you know my rules that I've presented here several times and uh, prophecy rules uh, and how we should have view symbolic words in prophecy. So the number one rule that I like to look at is that we should first look at the word and to see if it's possible that that word is an actual word. In other words, it's not symbolic of something else. And when I, when I say something is symbolic, the, the one I point to that's very readily apparent is the dragon with seven heads in Revelation 12. We've never seen a dragon with seven heads on earth. So we know that's a symbolic representation of something else. And in this case, it, it is the devil. But we're going to see that there are other words here that we want to evaluate in prophecy to see if they're symbolic or actual. So let's take a look at Revelation uh, chapter 8 and verses 8 and 9. And it says, Then the angel sounded, and something like a great mountain, and, and I have previous videos, and I think that's in today's time that great mountain, mountain would be realized as an a asteroid. So something like an asteroid burning with fire was thrown into the sea, all right, so this asteroid is coming down out of the sky and it hits the earth somewhere and it hits the sea. There's actually two asteroids in Revelation that hit the earth. 
one hits the sea and one hits the land. But we're just talking about the one that hits the sea right at the moment. Okay, so this asteroid uh, burning with fire was thrown into the earth and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. So the question is, are these ships real or are they symbolic of something else? Well, I think these are real. Now, if you take a look at the, uh, the ships that are used in today's commerce, what, what do they deliver? Well, everything. They deliver food, they deliver medicine, they deliver crude oil and finished gasoline and natural gas. They deliver cars and SUVs. Uh, you name it, they deliver it. And contrary to what some people realize, they also can uh, deliver a high percentage of the drugs that we are prescribed by our doctors uh, for our various uh, elements. So here's a little illustration or a picture of where the, the source of the drugs are. And you can see that they're evenly divided amongst the world. The U.S. has 28%, uh, Europe has uh, what is it, 26%, India has 18%, China 13%, and the rest of the world uh, 13%. So on any given drug that you're taking, the chances are that it was made in the U.S. 100% is not high. Most, I would say three quarters of the drugs come from some other continent. So they are traveling, not by airplane primarily, but by container ships on these gigantic ships that go back and forth between the continents. So, you might say, oh, okay, Art, that's interesting. And so an asteroid is going to hit the earth, it's going to hit the sea, and it's going to destroy ships. That's what the Bible says. So when will this happen? Well, the Bible tells us that, that there are perilous times ahead of us. Uh, in 2 Timothy 3.1, it says, But you know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Well, are we living in the last days? That's for all of us to decide, but I think we are. I think the last days are upon us. We're not going to get another hundred years to fool around with, uh, with sin on earth. God is going to bring this sin situation to a close. So in uh, Daniel 12, 12, uh, it tells me that we have 1,335 days in the future and it's called the Great Tribulation. And this is when God is going to bring the sin situation on earth to a close. And you can see here in this picture that I believe the asteroids, one will hit the earth and one will hit the sea, the asteroids will occur at the beginning of the 1335 days. So you can see here, I've got that illustrated, and of course, at the end of the 1,335 days is the second return of Jesus. So these asteroids will occur uh, within the first, I'll say first few weeks, maybe a month or two of this 1,335 days. Now I have other videos that I go into more detail explaining how I come up with these uh, timeframes. But I'm pretty confident in my own mind that these will occur during the beginning of the 1,335 days. So what, what, would I, what do I think will result when these asteroids hit the sea, when the, when the, especially when the sea one hits? What, what will happen when the sea asteroid hits? Well, immediately <clears throat> in, the, in the area where the asteroid comes down and hits the uh, impacts the sea, the water will get extremely hot. Now, if you remember, about a week ago, we had an asteroid that didn't really fly real close to the Earth, but it was going at 77,000 miles an hour. And it was a pretty big one. 
So the kinetic energy in uh, these asteroids is astronomical. So if that asteroid should hit a body of water, like the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the China Sea, if it should hit one of these uh, oceans, large oceans, that kinetic energy will immediately be tr uh, transferred or ca cause the water to boil. And it'll, that asteroid will not just bounce off the water. That asteroid will probably, this is what scientists say, will probably go right through the deepest ocean and hit the bottom of the sea. So the water will get very, very hot. And what it does, it will deplete the ocean water of oxygen. So with no oxygen in the water, both animal and plant life will die. Some will die immediately from the impact and from no oxygen. And some uh, additional plants and animals will die over the uh, subsequent weeks and months. So number two, what's the next thing that'll happen? Well, in a short period of time, the water will turn blood-like. It'll turn like blood. It'll turn red. That's called the red tide. And this is a very uh, somewhat common thing around the world that occurs at various parts uh, in various lakes and oceans. And you can Google this and learn more about it. But the red tide kills plants, animals, and fish because there's no oxygen in the water. All right, so what's, what happens after that? Well, as we know from other various earthquakes on uh, underneath the oceans and, uh, and what have you, that a gigantic tsunami will result from that asteroid hitting the sea. Now, there's all kinds of crazy numbers that people come up with on how, how high that uh, tsunami will be. But it'll be, some people say a, a mile high, but it will be hundreds and thousands of feet high probably. You know, only God knows. But it's going to be a gigantic tsunami. And that's going to be immediately uh, started as soon as that asteroid hits the, wor the water. And that asteroid travels across the sea at hundreds of miles an hour. So even if it the asteroid hits way out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That will travel to the west coast of the United States. It'll travel to China, to Japan, uh, and various coastal cities on that uh, western part of the, the world here. So what will happen to coastal cities? What will happen to San Francisco if it should hit in the Pacific Ocean or Los Angeles? What will happen to Tokyo? Well, these cities will probably be hit by a wall from the, of water from the tsunami and millions of people will die. So this tsunami is going to be tremendously powerful and it'll kill millions and millions of people. Well, that's, that's how I see the prophecy in Revelation uh, eight happening. I see a an asteroid hitting the seas. It's going to upset the shipping of the world. There's going to be shortages of food and medicine and supplies globally. You know, a giant tsunami will be created and it will travel and inundate coastal cities and many millions of people will die. Well, that's it for today with What's Up With Prophecy. So keep studying your Bible.